I'm Vicki Funk from the Department of Botany, and I'm going to talk about one of the projects I'm involved in right now. <clears throat> the talk is entitled The Andes. You call this the tropics. Sometimes people think of the Andes, they think of teeming forests and full of life and uh, lots of large animals and things like that. But in reality, there's some very interesting ecosystems in the Andes that are not like that at all. And the one that I work in is above about 3,200 meters at a minimum, and usually above 4,000 meters. And it looks a lot like this. And this is from a recent field trip. Um, this is in Peru. And um, this is at about, I don't know, 4,500 meters. We got caught in a blizzard. Uh, and so there are some other pictures here to show you different scenes. You have large lakes, glaciers, uh, volcanoes, and a variety of other ecosystems. This project is being conducted in uh, conjunction with two of my former postdocs. Some of you probably know them. This is Mauricio Bonacasino, who's now in Uruguay, and uh, Mauricio Diaz Granados, who's now in Colombia. And um, uh, the Smithsonian is to be thanked for our support. So the Andes is really a biodiversity hotspot. It uh, has a variety of ages. The oldest mountains are at the base uh, in the south, and the youngest mountains are uh, up in Venezuela. And they're only about the height elevation ecosystems in Venezuela are only about two million years old. So there's a real uh, variety of uh, ages. They also have a lot of complexity in ecosystems, so they have a lot of diversity and a lot of species and a lot of people depend on the Andes. And there's the usual uh, problems with mining and grazing. There's 45,000 species of plants and about 6,000 species of vertebrates. So it's got uh, quite an interesting uh, group of organisms. On the right there, you can see several of the habitats, several of my favorite habitats, <laughs> starting in the north at the top with the high elevation ecosystems all the way down to Tierra del, near Tierra del Fuego there in the center. I work on the family, if you don't know <laughs> by now, I work on the family Compositae, which is also called the Asteraceae. It has about 25,000 species. It's global in its distribution. <laughs> and it has some plants you might recognize, like daisies and sunflowers and dandelions and thistles. So if you look at it and uh, figure the numbers, about one out of every 10 plants that you pick up is in this family. So this project is called A Tale of Three Clays. And a clay, for those of you who, who don't know it, is a, a group of, a natural group of organisms. And there are three clades in the family that span the whole length of the Andes. And if you look at the diagram, you can see the yellow dots at the top, which represent the Paramo ecosystems. And they're studied by Mauricio Diaz Granados, who works on the Espolidias, these high elevation plants that you see in the top picture on the right. Um, the central area, the blue dots, are the punas, more or less. And that's where I work a lot and the plants there in the middle uh, with the dry areas and wet areas. And then in the bottom, you have the more temperate areas of the Andes where the Chiliotrichum is that Mauricio Bonacassino works on. So the three of us together are trying to address climate change in the Andes and its effect on the distribution of plants in the future. So the study groups are, as I just mentioned, on the upper left, uh, the Espolatini, which can be up to 20, 30 feet tall. You see some of them in the second picture. The Chiliotrichums in the south, which is in the upper right, uh, which is a shrub that grows in the open plains. And then the ones that I study, the Warnerias of the central Andes, which can grow in very wet or very dry habitats and have very different morphologies. So this picture, if you look at it for a second, just conceptualize this. This is the northern Andes. Mauricio Diaz Granados did this. This is a blue is forest. The red are the Paramo ecosystems of the northern Andes. And the white is the snow. And this is the way it more or less looks today. And then using climate modeling, Mauricio has been able to predict what it's going to look like 100 years from now. And you can see there's no snow. There's a huge reduction in the amount of Paramo ecosystem and a great increase in the amount of forest. So naturally, that's going to have a big impact on the plants and other organisms that live there. And here's his estimate for the Espolidias, the plants that he studies. This is what it looks like today. This is the diversity we have. This is a diversity predicted in 100 years, so it's over 50% loss of the species in this group. So what are we doing? Um, we're looking at the phylogeny of each of these groups. Uh, two of them we've completed. Uh, mine is the one that's remaining. <clears throat> I do have a, a little bit of an excuse here because you'll see the blank areas in black, the no blue dots, and that's where we're doing field work right now to try to fill in 
fill in the gaps. But you, those of you who do modeling know that you have to have an even distribution pretty much of the, of the things you're collecting to be able to get a predictive model. Uh, but you can see on the right the preliminary modeling we've done of uh, some of the ecosystems and you can see of uh, the species. You can see that the Labanathamnus up from the north is predicted to go extinct by uh, 2080. The Wernaria glabarima is going to be greatly reduced. Uh, the Chiliotrichum diffusum, on the other hand, is going to do fine. This one has a broader section, selection of habitats where it can exist. And finally, the one, the one from Terrio Fuego is also predicted to go extinct. But just briefly, I can't explain this right now because of the time, but we're looking at turning the cladograms upside down, positioning them on the uh, mountain landscapes, and then looking at which clades are predicted to go extinct as opposed to just species. So we're looking at it at a phylogenetic level as well as an individual species level. Finally, just want to say that um, we're trying to look at how we might help. Uh, and one of the things is that Mauricio Diaz Granados is now the director of science at the uh, Bogota Botanical Garden, and he's building a house uh, that will mimic the Paramo ecosystem where we're hoping to be able to try to grow some of these plants that are predicted to go extinct. This doesn't just apply to plants. There's a whole bunch of organisms, amphipods, gastropods, small fish that live in the lakes along with four species of flamingos, bears, and uh, like everywhere else, lots of beetles. And it doesn't just pertain to the Andes. We have the same kinds of ecosystems globally that we hope to, to use this for. And I'll close by just leaving you with my favorite quote uh, from John Muir, which says, tug at a single thing in nature and you'll find it connected to the universe. Thank you.